Hey there, fellows. So we've just brought in this car, which we have featured before. It's gotten so cold out there that as soon as it came in, it got covered with frost. Minus the hood, but then that's not the point. Here's the idea that we'll be trying to bring to life in this episode. Now, I do remember people asking, we do it a while back, take a classic rear-wheel drive Lotta like this one right here, remove the carburetor and make a sort of makeshift single-point fuel injection system, using a single small fuel injector. We don't know whether that's going to increase or lower fuel consumption, since we've yet to even try it out. In any case, we'll be going with the same principle as with the automatic transmission conversion, as in spend as little as possible while going for maximum reliability. Now we're going to try making it work off the distributor. We'll find an injector with the right capacity, and on top of that we can play around a bit with the fuel pressure. Right here I've got me a cam-type distributor, a simple one without the Hall effect sensor. This is the most primitive one you can get. When contact is broken, it gives you spark. And when it forms a circuit, that's when you have contact. I of course meant that it'll give you spark when it's doing what it's meant to in a car. In our case, it'll be running the injector. Okay, let me show you guys what we've prepared for this one. Here's what we're looking at, fellows. I've got the distributor connected to a light bulb. And take a look at this. The distributor is rotating, the light is flashing. And this is exactly how the fuel injector is going to be operating. Now I could have just hooked it up. The problem is, the clicking wouldn't have come through in the audio. It wouldn't have been picked up by my microphone. Whereas here we can clearly see how this works. Now obviously one more thing we'll need is a throttle body assembly. In order to be able to adjust the amount of air coming in, and to correct the air and fuel supply for the whole thing to work correctly. Now we are still missing a sender assembly, but I'm sure we can cobble that together out of something. Now in theory, the quicker the distributor spins, the faster the injector is gonna fire away. Okay, so to make this work, we need a sender, a pressure regulator and an injector, so let's go get all of that and begin assembly. Okay, here's where we're at with this, fellows. We've decided to mount the distributor right here onto the camshaft. We've connected a ground wire to the distributor, and that is what's going to trigger the fuel injector. That's how it's usually done anyway. And we've also got this nifty adapter. It's a pipe with a 90 degree bend. We've got the throttle body mounted up here, and we've got a window. Now we should start by seeing how it works in this position. Oh yeah, and one more thing. When it's switched off, the motor can potentially assume any position. It very well might happen that it'll be sending a constant signal to the injector, which will result in it being stuck open. In order to prevent that, we've installed a button. That you have to press to power up the system for the whole thing to run. Right, I say we try this out. We won't find out how it works until we do. Does anybody want to go do the honors? Let's do this. Let her rip. Oh, for real! It's maintaining idle. Too many connections. Ай-яй-яй. 
The hoses have given up, and that's despite the pressure being rather low. So it's just a bunch of clamps and hoses, and the hoses are leaky. I guess we'll have to do some revisions. One spark is all it takes. We'll have to get all of our fire extinguishers. Well, I mean, I've already brought one over. Just in case, you know. <laughs> Okay, well, here is what we've done. We're running an adapter. Now, unfortunately, there is no getting away from the hoses. This is an experiment, after all. Let me open up the throttle just a tiny bit. All right, let's try this out. Wow, you can even adjust it. Wait, let's get the idle right first. I can see a lot of... a healthy dose of gas going in. There is a lot of gasoline going in. But then it leans out. Let's adjust it some more. Bring them up. You know what? Wait, I think we should bring them down. Perhaps try a different injector? With less capacity. Because, you know, you can actually adjust this any way you like. You can play around with the pressure, bring the pressure inside the fuel system down a bit. Another way you could make adjustments is via the distributor. If you were to make the gap... Switch it off, please. Cut the power to the injector, so you can use the fuel pressure for adjustment, or even the cam inside the distributor. Now, I'd really like to bring the pressure down a bit. Two and a half kilos seems like a reasonable figure. It should be at three, but two and a half is also enough for it to work. Now, I could tell through the window that the fuel was pouring out, but we do have injectors that'll properly atomize it. Okay, now that we've got a working system, let's go ahead and swap over the fuel injector and see what that does for us, though we do have to find it first. Okay, we've gone ahead and fitted a new injector that better suits our needs and provides good atomization. It's for a Nissan Sunny with a QG15 engine. All right, let's do this. Yeah, it is putting a lot of fuel in there. Yeah, this needs some slight adjusting. Can you turn it over? Or it to... I need it to be right on the cam. One more time. Too much? Okay, that's great. So at the moment we are running a small gap, and we want to widen it slightly. Can you spin it for me? To see if there's contact. Like I said, there is a ton of adjustability. There is a bunch of ways you can do it. Alright, let's try this one more time. Go for it. Hmm. Okay, so look. Right now it's opening like... for a very short time. Not enough to sustain engine operation. I guess that means we need to tighten the gap then. 
You know, I might even be able to get this right using the distributor. I might be mistaken, of course. But something tells me it is very possible. Hit it. Wow, it's like we adjusted the ignition. And now the engine is running so much differently. And the response is good. Too bad we splashed so much gas onto the engine, though. Because once the manifold gets warm... What do you think? How does it react to throttle input? It's wild, eh? Yeah, we have got a winner. 100%. The fuel injector... seems to have worked quite well, I think. Though it still seems to be flooding the engine slightly. What if we try this one? Okay, we've swapped over the injector. Let's give this a try. Nothing. We did swap over the injector, everything is good. But you see, here's the problem. I went out and bought all of these injectors from a wrecker. And this one is bad. However... We do have an engine with 800 cc's of displacement, four cylinders, and despite it even being turbocharged, I still expect the injectors on that to have a lower flow rate. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the injector from the tractor, and see what happens when we use it here. Okay, we've replaced the injector, it's all good. And it is a nice fit. Okay, let's try firing it up. Now it should start without me touching anything. I know, right? Let's go. It's as if it's spraying even more fuel in. Turn the injector off. Okay, so here's the situation. This is a bit counterintuitive. You'd expect a smaller displacement engine to have fuel injectors that are... I guess it's all in the turbo. Yeah, that has to be a... That's the main contributing factor. I guess we can't use this injector either. The best one so far has been the one from the Nissan QG15 motor. Okay, well, then this is a no-brainer. We remove. This injector, reinstall the one from the Nissan, do a few adjustments and just head straight out, without even a second thought. Okay, we've got everything assembled, it's looking good. Let her rip. Oh, really? What is the matter? Why'd you switch it off? It's doing that because we changed the gap. Oh, uh, yum. It's not reacting. So throttle response isn't great. Okay, I see. <laughs> Setting this up seems simple enough. But even the slightest change in the gap seriously and immediately affects the engine's behavior. All right. Now I have to push some buttons. Okay, so that's working. It feels pretty good, actually. Uh -huh. 
Что за? What's that about? Here we go. Well, it drives. Though I am a bit scared to accelerate, given that the brakes are barely even working. I'll have to be extra careful. Okay, now I get it. I'll tell you guys a bit later what I mean. I just had a curious insight. You know, I didn't think that this would work, to be completely honest. I was very skeptical at first. Like, why would you even want to replace the carburetor? But here we are. But how high is it gonna rev? The taco works, so let's check. To see how high it revs. Okay, it's cutting off at four and a half grand. That's not a bad result. If you consider that we threw all of this together using leftover parts, essentially. Yeah, we need to make a few small adjustments. I even know how we're gonna do it. We'll discuss the matter shortly. This is so cool, I mean... Yeah, this is a pretty interesting story indeed. It appears to me that the throttle body is a bit too big. As for the Nissan fuel injector, well, it seems to be a pretty good match. It provides more than enough fuel, and without any load, the engine revs to five and a half thousand with no trouble at all. Though under load, I could only get it up to four and a half grand. The key here is to be easy on the gas. The reason for that being that the throttle body is just way too big. Suffice to say that you get optimal revs when it opens to about... perhaps a third or a quarter of the way to wide open throttle, because you really do have quite a bit of air coming in. And after a certain point, it feels like it's not getting enough fuel. But when we use a fuel injector with a higher flow rating, that switches things around. That's gonna result in the engine being slightly flooded at idle. I mean, you can really smell the unburned fuel coming out of the exhaust pipe. With this injector, there's no smell, and the car drives nice. And so if you decide to go this route, well, first of all, you're better off using a smaller throttle body. This one really is a bit too big. Then you have this injector, you run a fuel pump, a fuel pressure regulator, and in order to be able to dial in the right pressure and make corrections in the process of doing so, the regulator has to have a pressure gauge. Or you could plumb that in separately. The drawback to that being, of course, well, just look at this complicated mess consisting of clamps and hoses, I mean, it is really hard to make any sense of this. I mean, honestly. Anyway, ultimately, we were able to put something together. We didn't even need any ECUs, myriads of sensors, I mean, yeah. They do send signals to the ECU for it to figure out the mixture, to ensure optimal engine performance and all of that, but this is also very much an option. And what's really cool is that it's controlled by a regular distributor. It's all very simple. 
Aside from the fact that you need a button. That's so in a situation when the engine stops in a position where you have contact in the distributor, you don't have the injector stuck open and pouring all the fuel from your tank into the engine. You definitely do not want it in there in such vast quantities. So yeah, aside from the button, no complications whatsoever. What else can I even say? I'm glad that this worked. And all the better that it's a very simple layout. All you need is a dizzy, a throttle body. This one doesn't even have an idle air control valve. That's it. Oh, and a fuel injector. Anyway, so watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Hopefully someone tries this and tells us about it. Alright, catch you later. This was an interesting one to try out. I mean, how did this turn out so nice?